I... I kept holding on, waiting for you. I knew you'd make it here. I knew it. It's all that kept me going. Know that I shall attend to her wounds. Garius. He tortured me. Trying to get me to turn on you. But we can't stay. We need to get out of here. Watch out! Ah, Garius. I thought I heard the shadowy slithering. So, you have made it here. I am impressed. But really, what did you think coming here would accomplish? You have done much to disrupt our war efforts. But you will answer for it. And you alone. Oh, you misunderstand me. Though your gesture of mercy will not go unpunished. Your companions. For them, I am prepared to offer mercy. You led them. You ordered them. I spoke at some length with your friend Nishka here, and with others you have traveled with. You have already felt the fractures growing within your tiny group, whether it be because of the paths to power, a slip of the tongue that shows the chink in the armor, or perhaps from those who can think for themselves and recognize the true enemy here. Bishop, my debt to you is over, Knight Captain. Don't think this has anything to do with you. It doesn't. But your uncle, he poisoned everything right from the start. You, I respect. But old Duncan, he just can't leave well enough alone sometimes. Oh, go on, Bishop. We have time. Our Lord will be here soon, and then none of this matters. You see, Duncan, he saved my life once. Found me outside my burning village. Nothing but dead Luskin all around. Thing is, I was the one who burned that place to the ground, and I didn't want any witnesses. Then Duncan comes along, right when I was wounded, barely holding on, and I can't do anything to silence him. That's it, really. Nothing complicated. Just settling debts that never should have been made. It was part of an initiation ceremony into a Luskin assassination squad. Like old Lorne once was. It's something they order all new recruits to do, whether they want to or not. And I don't care for that too much. You see, they order you to slaughter a Neverwinter village as part of the initiation ceremony. I decided to take care of two problems at once and I chose my own. You see, for every West Harbor that gives rise to someone like you, someone great, there's a hundred of me that end up going down the other path, and my village, not worth talking about, it doesn't even deserve to survive. So when they ordered me to destroy a village of my choosing, I saw a chance to kill the Luskins and kill that place that helps make me the fine, upstanding man you see before you, all as a fortunate accident. I was going to burn the village to try and kill the Luskins who were watching over me. There was a trap, but those villagers, those fools, they wouldn't leave when I told them, so they died too. I set a bunch of fires around the perimeter, let it all come circling in, and they all burned like sheep trapped in a corral. I told them to leave, to run, but they wouldn't leave their houses, especially when I told them. So they deserve to die right along with the Luskins watching me. I took a few arrows, had some wounds, and to be honest, wasn't sure I was going to get out of there at all. I was too weak to fight back, but it didn't matter, because for the first time, I felt all these chains come off of me. I felt free at last. But then Duncan came along, right at the end, tying me to that place, tying me to Luskin, tying me to the past. He saved my life. Then he said I owed him in that stupid joking voice of his, but I knew what he meant. He was blackmailing me with what he knew. Then he called his debt due, and that debt was to help you. And I had to do it. Else he would have told everyone that I was at that village. And then the Luskins would have come looking for me. I don't like obligations like that. Or obligations like you. 
After this, I'm free and clear. After the King of Shadows rolls across the coast, none of this is going to matter. Come now, Bishop, let us be on with this. Our master awaits. You watch it. I'm not anyone's lackey, not any- I think we've heard enough from this night of Neverwinter. And from you, Ranger. Now be silent. Is that so? Well, in that case, you can handle the shard bearer on your own. After all, you really don't need me, do you? I think it might be best if you stopped having people stand between you and the night captain here. Torio, Lorne, your Reaver friends. I'm not going to fight your battles. You will die here if you leave, Bishop. I will come for you when I am done here. Garius, you're going to die if you stay. <laughs> you were never a true leader, even with the ritual and the sword of Gith at your side. Do you think all your companions who follow you would follow you to death? I think not. Know that the choice is a simple one, Garius. If you fight us, you fight us all. Ah, of course. But let us ask each in turn, and we shall see the truth of it. And dear Nishka, let us start with her. Just to drive the blade home. What? Nishka! I tortured her, it is true. But cutting open your fiendling ally reveals some interesting truths beneath the skin. Wherever she goes, demons dog her footsteps and lie in her path. Zaxis, Mephasm, and I think it is more than coincidence. Lower Plains blood draws Lower plain blood, and the stronger the ties, the stronger the pull. Your half-demon companion has just the right touch of demon blood in her veins to make some ancient ill fond binding spells take root. Provided you shed enough of the owner's blood and the stones of this fortress, of course. She must have a most unusual heritage for her blood, even as thinned as it is to carry such power. And once she ran out of scream, she learned to obey. Didn't you, my dear? You'll see the hell soon enough, Garius. I promise you. Don't struggle over much against the binding, tiefling. Save your energy for the battle to come. And really, I think the execution of this irritating night captain is a small price for your freedom. The alternative is much worse, I assure you. I am so, so sorry. But I have to do it. It's like the weight of this whole fortress is pushing down on me, all of Ilfarn all at once. Come on, fiendling. I... I can't do this. I won't do this. By the hells, I'm not gonna turn on the one person who showed me kindness. And if it costs my life, so be it. You will pay the price for your disobedience shortly. But there are others who even now question their loyalty. Sand, I know you studied at the Hostower, and what relics you saw there are nothing compared to the ones that lie here. The secrets of ancient Ilfan, the power you seek is here. And I can allow you to rectify certain inequities. Yes, well, as tempting as the offer to become one of the many Shadow Reavers we have already slain is, I shall pass. Not much future, you see, for you or them. Besides, the little girl here, she needs minding, else... Well, else bad things could happen to us all, and I will not allow that to happen. Ah, and then comes the matter of restraint. I can feel your indignation, Quara. Your power rolls off as your anger grows, as those weaker than you claim to understand you, when all they want to do is drag you down. The power you have. Imagine if it was increased threefold, tenfold, a hundredfold, without limit, without restraint. 
All the chiding and lessons and lies of the Academy and your father would be nothing against such power. I mean truly. What more is there to learn from the people of Neverwinter? Not much, I think. Their time on this plane is done. And have your companions offered you any insights? Or simply more hostility? It sounds to me as if they are simply another academy of narrow-minded fools one needs to separate yourself from. Carve your own path, my dear, and I will show you the way. Even if Sand wasn't against you, I'd stand with you. I'm tired of him and all the rest telling me what to do and how, when. I'm the one with the power, not them. And this is what I feared all along. The girl has become a child, and now, Kara, you are our enemy. And Amanjero. History can be rewritten this hour. Your allegiances need not remain. There is so much pain that can be undone by my lord. All those wasted decades. They need not have been in vain. The contracts with the infernal legions that bind you, with enough power, those are easily broken. As for the Githyanki, we can take the battle to them as well. You need never fear either group again. And your dear Chandra, she need not remain dead. We can return her to you, and her life that you missed. You can come to know her again. You could promise all that and more, Garius, but for all your empty promises, I have seen the one I follow accomplish so much more. And Garius, for mentioning Chandra to me, I shall enjoy watching you die. I see you have deprived many of your so-called companions of even the most basic equipment, as if you knew they might betray you. Nice try, but ultimately futile. Forgive me, just a small precaution to shield the portal from the bloodshed to come. After all, the King of Shadows is almost here. Too bad you won't be alive to witness it.
Why did they choose to side with him? It makes no sense. But they were our friends. And now we've lost them. Like we lost Chandra. What made them do that? No, the shadows offer many temptations. But the end result is empty. As was their deaths. It looks like the portal's opening! No matter what we do! But I swear, I'm going to go out fighting! We haven't traveled all this way to give up now. There must be something we can do, something to stop the King of Shadows. If there's anything you need from the bodies of our former allies, take it. We'll need everything we can to survive this. from the ritual. If anything can stop him, they can. That it then? Not what I was expecting. The King of Shadows' presence still echoes loudly. The statues! Oh my.
eyes. Know that your life is at an end. One of them I killed! Another got back up! Steal yourselves. This is not over. My! I thought he was big before. But that was just in my imagination. The King of Shadows uses the statues to empower himself. Then the statues must be destroyed to sever his link to them! I believe we have weakened him, so he is now relying on the statues. If we destroy the statues, he will be vulnerable to final defeat!
And as the final blow was struck, the King of Shadows, the ancient guardian of Ilfarn, at last was laid to rest. But in his death throes, the power of Ilfarn was released, sending echoing blasts through the Fortress of Shadows. The walls were torn asunder, the stones crashing down upon the valiant heroes and their knight captain. They fled through the twisting corridors of darkness, but to no avail. The stones themselves crashed down around them, sealing them within the fortress. Leagues away, far from the Vale of Myrtalane, the soldiers of Crossroad Keep, still fresh from their battle against the King of Shadows, watched the shadows over the mere drain away into the skies. The victory was theirs, but as for their knight captain, there was no trace, except for the cloak that marked the captain as a knight of Neverwinter. Of the Knight Captain and the Fortress of the Enemy, there was nothing else left to mark their passing. And to this day, where they have gone is unknown. In the year following the war against the King of Shadows, Neverwinter quickly recovered, its city watch, grey cloaks, and even the many starred cloaks gaining numerous new recruits. Emboldened by the actions of the Shardbearer, the ranks of the soldiers of Neverwinter swelled becoming one of the strongest military units in the Sword Coast. This ended up being a boon for the City Watch Captain Berlena, who used her ties to the Shardbearer and Lord of Crossroad Keep to petition for a seat on the Council of Neverwinter. From there, she passed many successful political resolutions that improved diplomatic ties with Waterdeep and the Lord's Alliance. Luskin viewed the events to the south in Neverwinter with some disappointment hoping that the war against the King of Shadows would weaken their southern neighbor long enough to force their intervention and control of Neverwinter and Crossroad Keep. When Neverwinter triumphed, their only victory was the return of their ambassador, Torio Clavin, who after several years of service, revealed that she was an agent of Neverwinter, and her role had allowed her to arrest over a score of Luskin spies who had infiltrated her new home city. Bevel, Led by the example of the Shardbearer, became a commander of the Greycloaks in time, finally finding the ability to lead and command. In the aftermath of the Second War of Shadow, he sought tirelessly for his fallen commander, convinced that the Lord of Crossroad Keep had survived. Shortly after the war, Dagon vanished. There were rumors of an elven ranger sighted throughout the lands of Faerun, still searching for the Shardbearer he had lost in battle against the King of Shadows. After the war, a few scattered survivors of West Harbor returned to their home, and with the persistence common to harbormen, slowly rebuilt their destroyed village. 
They still make their living at the edge of the mirror, a testament to their strength and character. The farm of Chandra Jero was left abandoned for some time, yet it never fell into disrepair. During the harvest season, the people of Highcliff came to pay their respects to Chandra Jero, who was rumored to have fallen in battle against the King of Shadows. Crossroad Keep achieved a new prominence in the coming years after the Second War of Shadow. Bolstered by the example of the Shardbearer, the Lieutenant Kana took over the operations of the Keep, and with Vidal in tow, helped restore peace to the region and turn it into a major trade route. Of the Gith Yankee and their Lich Queen, no more was heard. Driven from the Sword Coast by the Shardbearer, it seemed as if the Hunters had retreated to their citadels on the Astral Plane. Even the wisest sages of Faerun know that whoever holds such a blade shall have a long journey ahead of them, both in the realms and beyond. But that is a tale for another time.